How's it going guys? In this video I wanted to take some time to show you how to actually get started with uh, Workbench. This is of course Tritium Niagara. Uh, for those of you guys that are familiar with Tritium, this is going to be basically an introductory video for some of you new guys out there uh, that do not have a lot of experience with Tritium. Now you know that most of my videos on this channel have uh, primarily focused around Metasys but I wanted to expand on that just a bit and we are actually going to look at a few things within Tritium. You know I've had a few guys out there ask me questions about Tritium and I'm going to try to dig in and begin starting this by showing you the basics of the basics. This is what you will do if you were going to set up a, a system from the scratch um, and of course you can see that I'm currently using Facilities Explorer branded version of Workbench. Of course, I am running 14.11.1. And what I want to do in this video, by the end of the video, we are actually going to have a couple of devices. Uh, we're going to have graphics set up, so stick around for that, guys. Also, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment below, and please share the video as well. That kind of helps the algorithm on YouTube, uh, promote the videos, and let them know that you guys like this kind of content. So this is what you're going to get when you open up Workbench. And if you are going to begin with a bare bones system, uh, this is pretty much where you're going to start. Uh, now what we're going to be doing is using some of the Facilities Explorer tools that come with this version of Workbench. There's some things with uh, this that you guys that use other branded versions of Workbench will be able to relate to, uh, but for now this is what we are going to do. Okay, if we are logged into Workbench, one of the first things that I want to do to begin, I'm going to go up to my Tools menu up top and I'm going to scroll down and typically you would create if you're just using the standard out-of-the-box software you would create a new station here uh, you would then go in and manually add each of the components that you need for your particular system uh, from there but what we're going to do since we do have some of the tools available with facilities explorer we're going to scroll on down and we have the option to create a new JCI station. What that's going to do is give us the ability to go ahead and let the software install a lot of the modules that we need for us. Okay, it's just a time saving thing. So I'm going to select new JCI station. This is where I will name that station. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to call this test station but you can name it pretty much whatever you need whether it's a building name a system name or whatever but that's just what we're going to be doing here i'm going to select the next button and this is where i will want to change my password okay and be sure to uh, follow the guidelines as far as your password naming convention there are minimum standards in fact what I'm going to do here is actually not meet those standards I'm going to hit next and show you the error that I get okay right here you can see that there are minimum standards that must be met before it will allow you to continue okay uh, be sure to follow these guidelines and create a strong password for the system that you create so that's what we're going to do now Okay, now that I have my password entered, let's see if it meets the criteria. And you can see that it did. This screen here gives me the option to select a lot of the pre-installed uh, components within Facilities Explorer. You know, if I am adding a, uh, uh, an N2 system, if I'm working on an N2 system, I can select that here. I can select LAN. Uh, what we're going to be adding is BACnet IP and MSTP. Okay, you can do BACnet IP only. It just really depends on your particular site, on the particular system that you're working with. There are also a lot of other options down through here. 
uh, that can be selected as well. But just to keep the process moving, we're going to go select BACnet IP. I'm going to hit next. Again, we have other options here that we can pull into the system if necessary. Uh, and there again, uh, you can select whatever you need for your system. And something that I forgot to mention, when I do select this, I can actually change this name. And I can name it whatever I need it to be. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave it to BACnet Network, which I think will work fine for what we're doing. I am going to go ahead and let it add a weather service to this. It's something that you can or can't do. It's really up to you. Uh, SMS service, uh, tunnel service, it really depends, again, on what you are doing within your system. I'm going to select Next. I'm going to go ahead and let this system copy the platform, copy the station to the platform. And, uh, you know, that's just one step that it can go ahead and do for us. And it, you know, instead of us having to go in and manually do that, but it really depends on uh, your preferences. If there's other things that you're going to need to add, other files and things like that, uh, you may want to do that prior to transferring it to the uh, to the station. So we're going to select finish, and once uh, this does get everything created for us, what it will do is actually take us into the station copier and automatically begin that process for us. Okay, so it's going to take just a few moments and you will see that it is bringing up this window to where we can connect to our platform. It may ask you to log in to your platform. It just really depends on if you've pre previously logged in or not. And here, of course, is where it does ask me for my login credentials for my platform. Since I'm running this on my computer, I will need to enter the credentials for my computer. If I am loading this onto a remote JACE, then I would need to enter the credentials of that JACE, okay? So we're going to select OK here, and what it's going to do is now take us to Station Copier, and it's going to begin the process of copying that new station down to the system where we can begin working with it. So it's going to take it just a few minutes to do that, uh, so just bear with me. Uh, there again, uh, running the screen recorder as well as Workbench at the same time slows the system down. So just bear with me a few moments while we wait for it to populate. Okay, it is giving me the option now to rename the station. If I wanted to change this, uh, the name of the station to something else before I copy it uh, to the local host, uh, this is where I would do that. But I'm going to, just going to go ahead and leave it what it currently is and I'm going to select next and what I want to select here is to allow it to copy all of the files into the directory and the subdirectory so I'm going to select that now what I'm going to do with this uh, typically you would want to automatically start this if you were going to be putting it on a JACE or whatever but I'm wanting to show you something when we get further along so I'm going to uncheck that now the auto restart is another thing too. Of course, if we were putting this on a JACE, we would want it to automatically restart in the event of a power loss uh, when the power come back up to where it would go ahead and go back into operation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that checked here, but I'm gonna select the next. And then it gives me a review screen here. And then when I select the finish, it will go ahead and begin transferring all of the files. And you can see that there are a lot of things that the Facilities Explorer will go ahead and populate within the JACE for us. Uh, it's going to put in a lot of graphics files as well as a lot of other files to help simplify some of what we will be doing within our system. Many of the different companies out there uh, will put their own flair, their own um, things like this within the system to where it can make setting up your projects go a little faster. Now that it has come up transfer complete, I'm going to select close window. And you can see here it is going to give me the option to open the application director. I'm going to select yes. And once I go into the application director, uh, this is where I will start the JACE from, or start the uh, station from. And before I do that, what I want to do first is actually show you a little bit about where this application director is. 
I'm going to first go back into my host, my platform here. And when I look at this, of course, we see all of the different files and things like this that are under this. But what I want to do, if I right click and select open platform, this is, of course, going to give me the option to connect either securely or non-securely. I recommend always connecting securely. Select OK. And the application director that you just saw a moment ago is right here. Okay, this is where I would go in either to the application director or the station copier, which you've seen where we loaded the station into the local host. Okay, that is this option here. Uh, the application director is where you would start and stop the station that you create, and that's where we was previously. Of course, we have remote file system, all these other options there that we're not going to get into at this point. I just basically want to give you some information to help you get started. So we're going to go back into the application director, so I'm just going to double click here. Okay, and here we are back in the application director. I do have the option again to auto start the station. I'm going to uncheck that and as well as the restart on power failure or whatever. Now that we have uh, the station highlighted and you could potentially see more than one in here, but I will tell you, you do not want to have more than one station running at a time, especially within Workbench or even on a Jace. Uh, it's not going to work. You're going to end up crashing something. Now that we have this highlighted, I'm going to hit start and it's actually going to start this station within the local host. You'll see it here. It automatically uh, just gets everything going and you can see it tells us here the current status of it that we're starting and eventually once it gets through everything here, it should come up and say running. And of course it will take it just a few moments to get all of that populated and this is also where you would go to stop the station as well you do have this option here for killing the station which that's basically like pulling the plug you know but it's not recommended that you do that what you would want to do if a station is up and running is select stop that way it gives it time and shuts it down properly okay if you were needing to do some additional work on a station and you needed to transfer that to uh, you know another device or whatever you could do this with the stop button you know I, again it's not recommended to use that kill button but it will stop everything from running if you press that you can see here it's getting everything started up we can see that it is now running on our system and what I want to do now is I'm going to go back over here to my nav window I'm going to right click and I am going to select open station okay it's going to give me the option again as far as how I want to connect I'm going to of course be connecting securely I'm going to select OK and here is where I will need to enter that password that I put in earlier where I change that okay I do not like leaving that as the default selected. I like changing that to where I know what that password is. Now that I have that entered, I'm going to select OK. And it's going to take it just a few moments. And now we are into the station. Okay, we have uh, everything here as far as what we need to go into uh, to begin setting up our system. Okay, I'm going to scroll down and you can see here is our config folder. This is where you will be spending a lot of time, uh, especially if uh, you know if you are new, if you're setting the system up, especially when you're setting them up, this is where you're going to spend a lot of time. I'm going to expand this down. You can see here we have our services folder, our drivers folder. Underneath our drivers folder, one of the things that it has already done is added the BACnet network for us. Okay, If we did not go through the FX brand or you know another brand, that is out there we would have to go in here and actually create the backnet network and uh, you know from scratch and you can see when I double click into this I want to show you something uh, critical first because this is something that you need to know you'll see you'll see here my discover button is grayed out I cannot discover devices or points or anything like that there's a very particular reason for that. I'm going to drop this down here. You have got to configure this correctly before you can begin discovering devices. Okay, I'm going to go into local device. This is, uh, if I click into that, you'll see here we uh, have at the top here it says fault. 
right? I have got to go through here and enter some information. The first thing, object ID. This is something that needs to be unique to each station that you set up. I would recommend if you are working on a large site that you have some type of a naming convention, some type of a structure that governs how each of these systems are set up within that site. For the purposes of this video, I am going to change this to 100. Okay, uh, but again, remember, you want to make sure that you have some type of numbering and naming convention in place. I'm going to hit enter, and you can see that the status of this went to OK. There's still some additional things that I need to set up underneath the BACnet COM. Okay, I can click into here, and of course, this is where my uh, additional information stuff is going to live. This is for my IP port. Uh, this is also going to be for my MSTP port. If I drop down my MSTP port, I have the option here of giving this a network number. For the purposes of this network, I am going to name this Network 1000. Okay, And of course, for my IP port, if I was doing BACnet over IP, uh, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to name this 2000. Okay, again, you need to have some type of numbering and naming structure in place for your system. Uh, now that I have the MSTP port, I've got a network number uh, entered here. And of course, I can just call this one and two. Let's just do that. Uh, but uh, for, uh, you know, you can simply do it from one and two. Uh, having this at 1000 and 2000, though, for example, if I wanted to number and name a device, uh, if I wanted to call this, you know, add a device, device one, uh, you know, I can use this type of numbering to actually set it up to where that first device would be 1001, uh, the next one would be 1002, and so on. What that will allow you to do uh, if you're going through your system or whatever is you can instantly look at a device and tell what network that device is connected to. Uh, that's just a little bit more of an explanation for that. Now, I am going to deliberately leave this false for a moment because I want to show you something else. When I hit save, okay, I'm going to go back to my BACnet network. Double click in here, and you will notice my discover button is still grayed out. Okay, if you do not enable it, you're not going to be able to discover points. So I'm going to go back in here. I am going to select true. Okay, I'm going to hit save, and then I am going to go back into my network again. And you can see we're still grayed out. Okay, the reason for that, I still do not have everything set up the way that I need it to be. Okay, you've got to get all of this set up properly before it's going to allow you to set up your network. Okay, I'm going to go back into my network options. Let's look a little deeper into my IP port. You can see here. As far as the status of my IP port and all that, it is disabled as well. Okay, I want to set this to true, and I'm going to hit save. Let's see what this does for us. Okay, I'm going to double click on my BACnet network again, and you can see we're still grayed out. Okay, let's go back into our IP port again. You see our link option? I'm going to drop that down. You see this here to where the adapter, it currently says none, okay? I need to select an adapter to turn on, to have this to look at, okay? I am going to select one of my adapters, and once I do that, I'm going to hit save. Now let's go look at our BACnet network again. I double click in, nothing, still grayed out. So let's dig a little deeper double click back into the site you can see here our enable I'm going to highlight that I'm going to select true once I hit true I hit save okay now again each of these steps is intended to help you capture some of the errors that people do in fact I have done this many times myself uh, the, you know, the times that I've done this, I, trust me, I have made that mistake. Now that we have 
got everything configured properly, our Discover button is highlighted. It is where I can press it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and press it. It's going to give me this option here of selecting, you know, device low limit, high limit, yada, 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 all that. I'm going to hit OK here. It's actually going to go out and start scanning for devices. Now, I'll just tell you, it's not going to find anything because I'm currently not connected to any kind of a network where I would be able to find something. However, we can still add a lot of the devices to our system basically from the CAD files and things like that that we have used, uh, that we've created in CCT or PCT. And let's look at how we would do that. Let's go back into our BACnet network. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select new. I want to create a new device. Of course, I do have the option from this drop down here. I have a TEC. I have other components here that I can go ahead and add in. And, uh, you know, the system will set up a lot of that for me. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to grab something just to show you. It's, this is not going to work properly. It's not going to have any kind of information in it. But it's, this is the whole purpose of it is to show you how something can be automatically put in. And I'm just going to call this TEC. You know, just something simple. Uh, let's see here. This device ID. Let's give this a device ID of 4. Now, when you're connecting to an actual physical device, what you need to make sure of, uh, in fact, this device ID, what this needs to be is it needs to be like the instance number on your network. You need to make this match to the device, to the parameters within that device. So I'm going to call this 4, uh, 5, 6, 7. Just, I'm pulling numbers out of thin air. The network, the MAC address, we're going to call this 5. Okay, just for the purposes of this video, it is enabled and all that. I'm going to now press OK. Okay, it's going to take it just a minute. Here's my device. And you can also see that it has populated over here on my screen. Let's just double click into this. You can see here we have a graphic. I do not have any points or anything like that because, again, there is nothing that this is connected to. If I select points, you can see there's nothing there. Okay, There again, this is just as an example. But there's other things that I can do to where I can go ahead and get my points pulled into my system depending on what I'm doing. All right? We have this TEC. We will just leave that there for now. All right, I'm going to go back to New. I'm going to leave this just as a standard BACnet device. I'm going to press OK. Here, I'm going to call this AHU1. Again, this is just a generic name, right? This is, uh, again, our device ID. I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, let's call it 1234. Make sure, again, if you're connecting to a physical device, the device ID here matches what is in your CCT programming or your PCT program. It will not work properly if you do not set it up properly. As far as our MAC address, I'm going to set this to address 4. Okay? I'm I've got all this filled in here. I'm going to now press OK. Here is the air handler that we just created. There's nothing there. And I want to leave it that way for now. The reason for that is when we get into our next step, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your files created within CCT or PCT to pull in your points as well as build your graphic based on those points within the system. While I have my back neck network highlighted, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go up to views, and I am going to go over to JCI BACnet Import Manager. I'm going to select that. What that will do is it will pull those devices into this window. My air handler here, of course I have no points underneath it. If you try to add manual points underneath this, these will not populate in the Import Manager. You can have any kind of just a single point. You can create just a fake point. 
There has got to be absolutely no points created underneath this whatsoever for this to work. Now, what we will do, we have our air handler highlighted. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to press the edit button. This is going to bring up this window. From this window, I have the option to add a resource file, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Right here up top, I'm going to select this. And now what I'm going to do is drill down into my computer to where my files are, my CCT files, or in some case, the PCT file, to where I can link to that. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, here is my air handler program. I'm going to highlight that air handler program and I'm going to select open. Okay, it's going to populate all this information in here for me. Another thing that it will let you do, right here I've got a couple of options. I can create the newer graphics, the newer PX graphics, or the old HX graphics here. I'm going to select true for this. That way you can go ahead and create the graphics for me based upon the points that it pulls from the program. I'm going to select OK. It's going to take it just a moment and then it's going to disappear from the screen. Okay, it has completely disappeared now. Let's scroll over here. Let's double click on our air handler and see what we get. Here we are. We have all of our points. We have a graphic set up for our air handler. Of course, we're offline because again, we're not connected. Underneath here, I do have my points. I can do is go up to the uh, corner and select Point Extension Manager. And from here, I can actually add trends, alarms, and things like that directly into the system. Okay? Uh, if I want to know, keep a trend on this unit being occupied, I simply check there. Select Change of Value since that is an occupied, unoccupied status. Uh, I can go into my zone temp or my discharge air temp or any of these uh, points, create trends, alarms, or just whatever I need within this system. Okay, very simple. And I can be sure to go down here and hit save. And of course, you know, here we are back at our air handler. Of course, if our air handler is going to be serving a series of VAVs, let's go through it one more time and create a VAV. How did we do that again? Go back into my BACnet network. Here are my two devices. And since this TEC, since it's something that just is, uh, we're not going to be doing any more with, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, so I'm just going to right click, select delete, and just get rid of that. Okay, but I do have my air handler still here. Okay, what we will do, I want to select new. And of course, I'm going to create another BACnet device, select OK and I'm just going to call this VAV. Device ID, again, set this to something. Uh, there again, goes back to the naming convention. Within your system, you need to go back to the program that you wrote within CCT or PCT and make this match. The same here for the MAC ID. Okay, I'm going to call this address 6. Right, I have it set up, VAV, again, you name it whatever you need it to name. This is just some generic stuff. I'm going to select OK, and here is our VAV. You can see, I double click, this is, brings me back to this window. Very simple. I'm going to go look at that VAV. Double click on it, nothing, no points, none whatsoever, because we still need to add everything in. And we're going to go back one more time. I'm going to right click, Views, JCI, BACnet Import Manager. Here's our VAV because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have already created any kind of points underneath that device, this will not work. So you have to have just a bare device. My VAV is what is highlighted. We're grayed out down here until I click on it. Once I click on it, I have my edit option. I select my edit, brings me to this window. Again, I'm just going to resize it to give myself some working room. Up here, up top, the resource file. I'm going to browse to where I have my files, and I'm just going to grab one of my VAVs.
select open. I'm going to create the graphic, select true for this, and now I'm going to hit OK. Takes it just a minute, that disappears. If I go back down here, double click my VAV, and now I have a graphic. I have points, I have pretty much everything set up. If I go down here to page two, I can see my thermostat. I can see everything related to it as far as my set points and things like that. If I click this, I have all of my points within that VAV. I can then go up to the point extension manager if necessary, add trends, add alarms, or just whatever else that I need on this. Okay, our supplier flow, if I want to add a trend on that, change of value, interval, however, whatever I need to add. Okay, we'll select interval. And now I have a trend on that supply airflow. Hit save, and we're done. But guys, this is just some basic information showing you some of the steps involved in setting your system up from scratch. Okay, again, you need to remember that when you're going through configuring this, that your device IDs, your MAC addresses, and things like that have got to match a particular controller within your system. It needs to match the um, software IDs perfectly, okay? If there's some mismatch in there, it's not going to work, okay? Anyways, guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do uh, just to kind of help some of you new guys out there along just a little bit. I plan on doing more videos on Tritium in the future. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments below. Also, guys, check out all the links down in the description. Thanks for watching. Visit my website at systemcontroltech.net. You can sign up for the newsletter that I have over there. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.